the side. Zia taken off the table away from Kami. Played it, despite it being a loss, looked decent earlier in the group stage. And a lot of talking on Flash Force, debating yeah. what's worth okay. being off the table. If you want to set up a Lula first pick for your team, you ban like an Elise here and say, okay, remove that from Surtees champion pool. And then we can first pick the Lulu or Kalista is another great one. Take that away from BRTT. So now Pain Gaming needs to decide, are we going to trade Mordekaiser for Lulu? Right, and that's the question. The answer is going to be no, so no Mordekaiser. But they could have actually traded two power picks for one right there, taking the Lulu more or something like that. But it will be the Lulu drafted first by the Flash Wolves. And what I like about this Kalista ban, honestly, for, for the Flash Wolves is when it comes to the jungle picks, at least to Rek'Sai, they're still fairly close, despite at least probably being the highest priority for a lot of people. Rek'Sai is still very, very close, so it's an okay trade to make. Kalista opens up for a lot more engaged options. Your support can play very aggressive, which is what teams have been using against Lulu compositions, because they reach that back line, chain CC, and take down whatever AD carry Lulu is trying to protect. Well, we do see that almost likely be in Maple's hands. Stake still one of the more prolific tank players here. I might give Mylon a little bit of freedom in that top lane if he can get to work around. And for NL, playing in place of Kramer, the only team that has actively really used their substitute a couple different times, and we actually heard in the interviews it was a preordained plan. NL will get his hands on Jinx. Uh, we've seen a few teams run the Lulu Jinx composition so far in this tournament to varying degrees of success. Uh, I think it's strong, but it depends on how much engaged the other team's willing to have. And, you know, honestly, I don't really like it with Annie. No. I think you go with the peel here instead of the engage. I wonder if Flash Wolves with the next two picks are going to go all in when it comes to diving the back line. A bit like LGD tried to do with the Vi and Malphite. But it's kind of weird because normally you have these full protect the back line conversation with a Lulu. Pain Gaming as well by taking Braum in the first rotation, kind of remove their hard engage option on the support side. Instead, they're trying to block some damage from Lady Carry, but it's very difficult for this lineup to reach. We got it there, we got the all in then. I mean, Annie showed it a little bit, but still Flash was there, ready to go all in. It's the top lane Yasuo counter pick into the NAR too. So after that's been shown, they're able to get stake on that champion. But we think about stake, we don't usually think about carry top laners. So this is a big, big burden. It's a great matchup for Yasuo but he's got to be huge here because yeah. in this tournament, he's actually 13th out of top laners when it comes to percentage damage dealt. He's about 10% in comparison to Smeb in the last game. So he's got to do more. Kasa has done the same amount of damage as Stake. Kasa's the jungler <laughs> on the team. But obviously Stake has been like the guy absorbing up in the top lane, the big tank up there for quite a while. He's had Darius games. He's had Darius, that's Two true. games of Darius. Again, he's just been like the big meat shield in the front. That's been Stake's job for Flash Wolves. Now he has to be a carry. Great matchup, as you mentioned. Again, you can block the boomerang. He doesn't get that cooldown reduction on it. And you can trade in mini NAR so effectively as the Yasuo. Just go all in. You just need your jungler to be around. And Kasa has done that in every other game for Flash Wolves. He's around that top side. And as far as, uh, you know, tournament team identity goes, this is a complete 180 degrees for the Flash Wolves. We've not seen any one of those champions played at the World Championships yet. So this is going to be a big stylistic change that That's we need to hit. see. 15 seconds before the swap needs to happen. Is Maple going to be running that Yasuo into Orianna, no less? I mean, stylistically with these players, that would make more sense. Yes. But it does beg the question of why did the Yasuo come out after the NAR pick? It's such a good pick in the NAR. Simply just for Flash Wolves, using the flex picks really, really well to try and bait around what uh, Pain Gamer we're going to pick because Orianna is a great matchup into Lulu. I like it personally a lot at least. So Pain Gamer were like, okay, it's going to be Lulu mid, you know, Yasuo top, get a good matchup for Kami. Instead, he's going to have to face the Yasuo. Still, Orianna can definitely survive in this lane and she's running double TP or Pain Gaming is running double teleport again where Mabel is not taking teleport in this game. So he has to be able to do well in his lane. Otherwise, he just have little impact. Well, when you're a champion like Yasuo, you're going to be looking to get ahead as early as possible, especially with the limited amount of knockups on the side of uh, Flash Wolves. Eh, let's say non-traditional knockups. Wild Growth will be decent. Dragon's Rage will be decent, but it's not the Braum. It's not what we're used to seeing. Yeah, it all depends on the skill of your jungler, though. If you can hit multi-man ults, and I trust Karsta to do that. I really do. So I think he'll be able to set it up. Still, though, going to be a little bit tough. Well, it's going to be tough indeed. Guys, jump on Twitter. Hashtag FWWin. It's the Flash Wolves or hashtag PNGWin. So the team compositions one last time as we load up onto the Rift. I feel like this is a 
more stylistic comfort zone for Pain Gaming. They've got some scaling, they've got some wave clear. They've got champions that they've used excessively. BRT Tristan is one of his most played. And for Flash Wolves, I think eyes on Casa and Sword Art. They're engages. When comboed with Maple's Yasuo, is going to be so important. Yeah, and that really is the key thing because Flash tables from Annie can look fancy, but it doesn't help your mid lane in this case. Even if you stun three or four guys, you need Lula Wild Grove in there, you need Casa to kick someone to set up Maple. But really for Flash Wolves, we were so hyped for this Yasuo top matchup because Casa's used so much time on the top side of the map, he can still put his effort on towards the middle lane where you have that Yasuo pick, try and get him rolling in the start. Now, one thing that's been a little bit lackluster for me this tournament, actually surprisingly, has been Maple. You know, we came in saying this is a, a great mid lane player over in the LMS, but he hasn't really delivered. He's only 12th in terms of damage out of mid laners, and his laning phase on GP was pretty poor overall. I think he's got to step it up. <laughs> he's going to have to do a whole lot because there's no room for error on Yasuo. At the very least, with Gangplank, those. Cannon Barrage ultimates Minions helped him out. Won. He doesn't have that same tool. But if Casa, who is performing well, can find that point and click Dragon's Rage, yeah. it'll allow uh, Maple to then keep him in the air. Still some things about this Flash Wolves composition. There's a reason we see a lot less Lulu top lane now. Compared to like these big Darius and Fiora, these champions that can really snowball out of control if you get some ganks going for them. Lulu doesn't have that same effect. Her teleports as well when she joins in can be fairly lackluster compared to these other champions with the big impact. So let's see what they can do on it. For now, dude is going to try and be annoying. Yeah, just coming in here trying to disrupt that weak side juggling after the start of the lane swap. And there's Grom, one of the more annoying champions to deal with that. And starting at Grom, it's a risk that Flash Balls have taken instead of starting on the blue buff itself. Do get one camp though, and we'll obviously delay their route down towards the bottom side, but they're here now. We also saw a camp being taken by NL and Sword Art, so they value that early experience, and we should get a very standard fast push from in for Flash Wolves. There's no freeze on the bottom side of the map. Well, we'll see how quickly those towers can fall. Looking very familiar as far as lane swap scenarios go, but take a look at the mid lane. You can see that Surti, Mylon, holding hands as they clear through the jungle. Maple's pushed up. Relatively deep. And you can see there's a little sniff here by Sir T. He's gonna go clear out that blue and then push to the top tower though. Yeah, Maple can play a little bit of aggressively. He had good eyes on the jungle earlier, so it's not too too much of a threat for him. Mylon and Sir T now trying to clear this out. Of course, the, you did give them the vision earlier on, so they're gonna go ahead and get a ward in to see if they're coming up and maybe get a dive if they're lucky. But as you can see, all the teams pushing and stake is already in the bottom lane hitting the tower, so both teams have full information on what's going on. The top lanes have shown themselves. What we normally see then again is you take down the tower and you give it over to your top lane and let him bounce the way back. But some teams at their World Championship have taken that top lane and forced him to recall and sent him against the lanes pushing away from him. And that sets him so, so far behind. Stake might do it though because he's on the Lulu, he's on the support, and then Jinx gets all the farm. Right, I think it really just depends on your team composition as to whether it's good to stack up that gold and Right, the Lulu, but he's going to get the gold anyway. Yeah. So they say, you know what, Stake, we do not want you to fall really, really far behind. Top lane, again, it can be so difficult. Playing his Sorda is still here, he should not be taking any gold, but Stake can look to take on. Didn't get the tower though on the first push. And he'll recall, and now another wave is coming down. So this is a bit annoying for Stake, honestly. Now, Mylon going to be left with a very good wave here as well as it pushes back towards his base. So looking very favorable for Pain Gaming as the laners swap to the opposite sides of the map. It's going to be very hard for a mistake here with this freeze because he has to also respect the fact that two guys are going to show up in his lane now, so he can't just stay forever. He might even get ganked by the jungler. So he's wisely just moving away. Tower is going to drop super low. Don't think it'll die. Let's see, a couple more minions. Oh my words. Ooh. Tower that has high. to be single digit HP. Eight hit points that is on that tower. Incredibly rough for the Flash Wolves early on. But to Payne's credit, one thing that we've seen from Payne Gaming in these group stages is their lane swaps have actually been pretty good, even against the Koo Tigers. They found ways to get advantages. They're clever in how they play the early game. I definitely say the lane swaps, the first few steps have been spot on, but then after that, they tend to fall a bit behind. Mylon wasing on top side. Q connects with Kaza. Well, let's take a look. Stun connects as well. Sword Art's going to follow through. Ignite is available. Both oh, versions oh. expended. Sword Art's in trouble. He's the down. turret shot kills him, but it's in execute. 
There was no damage put down. And Flash Wolves get away quite lucky there. Great patience from Bylaw and just waiting for them to come in. Doesn't expend his Flash early and it really actually punishes the Flash Wolves. Definitely not as bad as it could have been without getting that first blood over, but a bit dicey. Yeah, the main thing for Flash Wolves is the fact you force Mylon away from the wave. He doesn't get any experience now to stay cut tonight on the bottom side as well. So you try and keep it even between the top laners for as long as possible. Now Stake can stay here and take the wave, but Mylan is returning. So it's gonna be fairly even between them. Meanwhile, AD carries. We've already seen now BRTT and the rest of the guys pushing a second tower. And interesting as well, BRTT started with that Avarice Blade. Heavily committed to this mid to late game power, but once NL, although NL's actually been hurt as well, he's picked up a dagger as first item. So both AD carries a little star for resources and going away from the traditional pickaxe starts. See on the bottom side, suddenly everyone is here. There's teleport ready for top lane. We might get a very early massive team fight. It looks like it's Sword Art's been caught and knocked up by Sir T. The Furious Bite comes down, knock up from Maple, but it's Pain Gaming, the Brazilians, that score first blood. And I really like this move here because you know the enemy supporters use Flash on the top side. So he's, he's going to have a very difficult time contesting vision on the bottom side of the map. Pain Gaming knows that. They move in to set up a trap. Who shows in or who shows up? Sword Art and he dies. Yeah, also, you know, you anticipate some of these recalls, especially after pushing out like that. One thing that Pain has done very, very well, both in the top side and the bottom side, is bounce the wave. They've nearly gotten full waves pushing back towards them in both the bottom and the top side so far. And that's given them an advantage that they can use like this. While wow, Mylon's teleporting in, the Flame Chompers, I think, were too early. The Chilling Smite connects, and here comes Caster as well. The hop forward from Mylon, he's about to go Mega Knot. The Satchel's gonna blow up, but there's not enough AD. Now Stake's on the wrong side. The RTT gets caught by the Zap. The Glitzalons tags two, and that's a kill onto Mylon. Caster's got one back for the Flash Wolves. Smite gets thrown down onto BRTT as Kami has arrived. Shockwave is available. It's gonna need to be massive if Pain wanna make this work. Diude's gone low, 200 HP, stakes chasing. The Unbreakable Shield comes up. The Shockwave pulls Maple backwards, but there's no follow through from Maple and it ends in a one for one and a million summoners. One of the issues with this fight from Pain Gaming, yes, they can choose to play aggressively there and it looks good, but they don't have really many combat stats yet. They're working off of a tier and an Avarice Blade. So not a whole lot they can actually do in that situation. Finally, that bottom lane turret yep. will go down. Evens out the goal for Flash Wolves. The reason BRTT had that Avarice Blade is of course when the tower goes down on top side, if you give all the gold to your top laner, you only sit on around 800 when you go back and it is basically your best buy, but it does set in behind. We've seen trading towers now, a lot of summers used. We won a big 5 on 5 team fight and we got it in the bottom lane. Well, only a couple members had their ultimates available, but you need to look at the damage and summoner spells. Stake is the only member of Flash Wolves that has a summoner spell not named Smite available. Well, they're not very Flash, they're just wolves right now. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Stake, just regular wolves. You have spent too much time with Doa <laughs> and Freak, Monte Cristo. I did not expect that level of punnery from you. <laughs> But we do see Maple clearing out that middle wave. And Stake playing quite aggressive on the top half with not the deepest division. And I do notice that cheeky pink ward snuck in behind. So we'll have to track how long that survives as Surti is clearing out that red buff in full vision. Mabel picked up a lot of extra farm after that fight. He could just return straight to mid lane. Everyone from Pain went back to base. And they were even before him and Kami. You also see the tier build you highlighted before, Monty. It's going to take time to stack up. But again, you don't want a Thiens in this matchup against a physical damage dealer. So he's most likely looking just to go for the tier. We can see Hourglass come in fairly soon as well for him. But a real Nomicon probably first. And that's probably something we've actually not mentioned too greatly. The magic damage on the side of Flash Wolves is actually relatively limited. Lulu will do OK much later in the game. But it should allow Mylon and Surti to prioritize armor. And that should give them some, you know, wiggle room when it comes to Maple and NL. Yes, of course, Maple's got some built-in armor pin, but, you know, itemization, if the game goes longer, a little easier for Pain, I feel, in fact. Yeah, also just the fact that you're going to have the big shield coming off the Seraph so that you can block a lot of the Yasuo initial burst damage, which is a large part of how the Flash Wolves is going to be trying to wombo combo you late in the game. Of course, Jinx there for the cleanup, but if they can't get the initial burst, to start getting those kills and getting the Jinx resets, it does cause a lot of problems in their team fights because Jinx has no peel, basically. So if they can't hit hard right off the bat, Jinx is just dead. Death cap, Sword Art, do it. 
what we're going to need to see. We do see a pickaxe picked up for NL. Uh, BRTT's grabbed himself that BF sword, a little bit of extra farming time and the Avarice. And it feels like the lanes have now somewhat standardized. Both top and bottom outer turrets are both down, but it's BRTT that's moving to this middle lane outer turret of, towards the flashpoint. Yeah, you get this moment now where so many outer turrets are down and nobody really wants to go for that early invade into the jungle that you just fight for river vision. Because once you have that under control, it means you can start moving a bit further up in your mid lane where the last outer turrets are left. With a Tristana Oriana comp, your siege is okay, especially once you get to that tower. Your range is not the greatest with Oriana when you're sitting there trying to poke. But we saw Pay Gaming move down, take some of the river control back, remove a pink one, and then suddenly they could move a bit further forward, but they want to play it safe. Well, Pay can only really play it safe this game. They don't have the best engage with this composition, so a lot of it's going to come down to how well Mylon can teleport and flank. Uh, because when we look at the flash rolls, sure, they've got that engage coming in there. We know the Annie can engage. Maybe you go ahead and you hit a great Lee Sin kick or Lee Sin uh, Sonic Wave resonating strike straight into a Lulu ultimate. These are things that they can use, but pain relatively short range unless they start using flash. And that was the surprising thing about the pick and ban phase with the Lulu first with the flash rolls, and then you see Rek'Sai Braum. To me, as a team, I'm like, oh, we can run legit a protect the AD carry comp, and they will not be able to reach him and kill him. It would be so difficult for him, unless they're like last pick, maybe a mouth fight, but that's not enough damage against Lulu. And yet they said, no, what, we want to go fight them. Oh, sorry. Rocket Observers, did steal Observers it. baited did, me. Yeah. Observers baited me. I'm like, not even close. They're following this for a reason. So the fish, yo, you see the the potential for a Protect the ADC comp, and then Flash will say, sorry, we disagree, we want to go all in with Annie, Lee Sin, right. Yasuo. And also I think Yasuo into Braum is, is, is very risky, because it's so easy for Braum to connect that first passive stack onto the Yasuo and single him out, use his ulti. You have Exhaust as well. A lot of ways to deny that damage from Mabel and take him out if he ever goes in. So it's, it, it was surprising. Plus, we had the chance to go protect the AD carry and said, you know, we want to fight you on even terms. Well, they are pretty even. Uh, in fact, bang on even as far as gold is concerned. Towers as well. Dragons as well. Uh, rather, kills as well. 1-0 in terms of dragons to pain gaming. Steel did not happen. I feel like the farm levels are lower than we're used to seeing at this point. 80 CS on the AD carries, 30 on the junglers. We have had a couple of uh, extended fights. No real, like, hard power farming from the junglers yet. Well, uh, especially when we talk about the side lanes in this game, it's been very feast or famine, very back and forth, especially in this particular lane swap. We saw a lot more swinging dramatically from one side of the lane to the other, and a lot of that's just all four outer side lane turrets going down early, so it creates very obvious points when each team is going to be farming. Yeah, Flash Wolves, in order to do something from here on, they need to go in and get deep vision and, like, take a fight around an objective. Pain Gaming have the option to go Siege on the mid tower, which is what they're trying to do by sending BRT to, BRTT to the mid lane. But Kami keeps going back and doing raves and like clear a few jungle camps, so the tempo Pain Gaming are putting on the game right now is not the highest. So Flash was are allowed to sit and farm with Babel in this mid lane. He's not really been pressured before now when the two guys are showing up. I want to see them really commit to this mid tower against the melee champion. Let's take a look. Babel's trying to clear out this wave as best he can, using that wind wall very effectively. And the RT team Kami don't even get that much damage down. Well, that's the annoying thing, right? If you were Tristana up against a Yasuo in the mid lane, is most of that turret damage comes from charging up that E, and when the wind wall is there, makes it a little bit harder to uh, get that damage done. Just rocket jump over it. Come on, BRTT. <laughs> Let's see if he can. They've not given up, though, Monty. You can see in the middle lane now. You? The cooldown is very long on the wind wall, so the second time the wave hits the tower, you will start getting some damage down, and you just slowly chip it away. Now you look at your bottom side, okay, big wave is going to start pushing in. If someone needs to go down, just go down, take it super quick, return to the mid lane then. You can even send down Oriana with the double TP now, and just let her clear the side wave and then return in towards mid lane. Well, they don't want to do that now. Looks like it's going to be a fight. Wow, flash timbers on Takami. He gets caught and knocked up. He's down before he can even shockwave. There's a reliable knock up. It's going to be delivered by Casa. The RTT forced a rocket jump to safety, and Maple aggressively goes forward. He does have a steel temper charged it will not find a target sword arts engage finds two and a follow-up tower well, they just caught him with their pants down right there really had too many people in that mid lane and they weren't respecting the fact that the flash wolves could engage right there so just a pretty simple man advantage situation yeah. where they took advantage of the fact that they were pushed too far forward great engage though from sword art he's one of the guys we've been looking a lot at i for blue up though well that's he's gone in without much backup Aggressive play. It's you can fight the table. Moving 
worked his way back in, but what a big swing after Pain Gaming was setting up what looked to be a decent siege. They just stuck around too long. Well, again, it's not even sticking around too long. It's more the fact that you overextend here. So Sword Art gets that engage. Very smart with Flash was how they're denying vision from the wards with the sweeping lens. And then they jump in and go aggressive with the flash forward from Sword Art. So hard to react if you don't see it coming. And also just taking advantage of the fact that this Ari, or this uh, Oriana rather, just has Tyr and Morello Namakon. There's no shield yet. So if you can actually hit her with that burst, it's going to be absolutely devastating and easy to clean up for the Yasuo too. So Pain, they need to stay back until they have the appropriate items to actually survive these fights. Otherwise, it's just way too easy for those resets on Jinx to come through. Really just have to highlight again how smart it was for the Flash Wolves. They saw that ward being placed, used a sweeper on it. So again, there was no vision around the corner and saw that then flashes instantly forward. So it's hard for Pain Gaming to react. They get caught out, ends up dying for it. But this is what Flash Wolves have to do with their composition. You cannot siege when you sit there with the Yasuo at this point, only Jinx. He's really the guy you want because Stake is going to sit in that side lane and always keep those lanes even with his teleport. And you have to make the first move. Also, you cannot sit there and allow Pain Gaming to, to hit you first because, again, there's no, absolutely no peel for this Jinx. If you, they get the drop on you, there's no way pretty much you're winning that team fight. Well, they did make the first move and Casa may want to do a follow-up. Dragon's Rage is available. He's going to kick Sir T. There's no follow-up from Maple, though. Here comes Sword Art from the side. The ball is down. Come on, Protect goes up. And Pain Gaming will make their way out. It costs Sir T his flash. And all that just to kill a warden place one in reply, just behind that red buff of Flash. It's going to mean for Pain Gaming that if you start losing control of the Dragon area or the Baron area later, it's so hard for you to contest it because, again, your composition or Flash will, sorry, composition relies, as you said, on getting that jump. And if you have full vision and they walk blindly into you, it's so easy for Annie to land the It's so easy for Casa to come in and kick someone in the back and set up Mabel. And it's, that's too hard for Pain Gaming to play around. And they're getting pushed out of uh, the river, at least. Well, Pain Gaming pushed deeper and deeper into their own territory as well. Maple sniffing around. They stole that blue buff after the previous fight and Dragon's up in 20 seconds. I think there's decent vision for Pain Gaming around the pits, not super deep. But it'll give them some information and it'll take Flash Wolf's time to clear. And of course, Pain Gaming do have public sentiment on their side. They're quite a big fan vote. They need to claw back this gold deficit, though, if they want to pick up a win. Well, fortunately for them, they have vision. They're not going to be surprised by Flash Wolves moving into this position right now. But they still have to play a little bit defensively. Traps coming down. I'll take a look. 1,000 HP on the Dragon. It's going to get secured. It is, in fact, Sir T that smites it. Sword Art's in a little bit of trouble. He's down. He did get Tempest out, but it simply wasn't enough. Mylon's going to hop. There's Casa. He finds oh. the kick, but the AoE from NL's Rocket will be enough. Fishbones wants more and gets excited. We did see Casa picking up a kill of his own. Two for one, but Dragon to pain. Flash Wolves didn't even set up Mabel. He did absolutely nothing. He didn't use his ulti or anything because right here, Pain engages first, but it's a shockwave onto the support. Support goes down, Flash Wolves gets the opening, the team bot splits up, which is what they want, and they start picking off targets. They just didn't chain the CC properly. They tried to pick off Sword Art before he could actually get the Tibbers down. Unfortunately, the timing between the shockwave and the Braum ultimate was just a little bit off, and that allowed them to get a stun on a few members, and then for Flash Wolves to turn the fight. If they killed Annie without that stun, they may have been able to do more. Fortunately, they did not, and even with vision, uh, mechanical, maybe, mistakes. Is there a replay of that fight? Take a look, Yasuo is in base right now, actually coming through. Traps go down for a little bit of zoning, but this looks really good for Pain Gaming at the start. See Sword out on the outside, here we go. Going to try and chain this together, but you can see he sneaks in the Tibbers right before that shockwave goes off, actually. And so they get the stun down long enough, buying time for Maple to come into this fight at the end, Karsa a questionable kick right there, but they're still able to clean it up. Pain Gaming ends up investing way too much in taking down the supports around the carries. Mabel, he's not done fighting, though. He's looking for more. Where the rest of his team? Well, we'll find out. Mabel's gone forward. Actually gets stunned by the Braum passive. Flame Chompers will buy some time. I didn't see who got the red. I think it was Sir T with a smite. Yeah, he get that cooldown. But we'll at least deny it from BRTT. So a small pressure win from Flash Wolves. And as we get into 20 minutes, they maintain some control, still dictating the tempo of the game. One thing that I don't like uh, that Flash Wolves are doing so far is if we take a look at their, their trinkets, 
it's very crucial that they deny vision so that they can get the jump, and they don't have any upgraded sweepers yet. Instead, they've upgraded two totems, and it's just isn't, I think, the best way to set up an Annie stun in this situation. And you're also not going to have a lot of success 1-3-1 one, one split pushing with a Lulu. So I'd rather see some different trinkets and some different upgrades here just to make sure that Sword Art can get the tippers down. Yeah, we have to see what Sword Art does. It's one more level for himself, but then Kasa can also join in already with the level 10. Siege in the mid lane. This is all about NL and the damage he can deal. Stake has to be there to protect him because now Pain Gaming gets the chance to get the jump when suddenly it's the only the Jinx sitting on the tower. One of the benefits of two of those upgraded totems is look at the wards in Pain Gaming's jungle. Allowed Flash to at least escort the minion line to the tower before it was wave cleared away. And let's see if uh, Flash Wars can demonstrate a greater control and patience around Siege if they opt to play this route. Because that was what cost Pain their lead, uh, what was it, 10 minutes ago. One of the hard things for Flash Wars is split pushing against double teleport. Again, that's one of the reasons it's become such a strong thing in this meta. Because even though Mabel can keep pushing down the wave, it's very easy for Pain Game to sit with one of the teleport users and just clear it on the tower. And you can always join in when there's a fight happening on the other side of the map. So unless Mabel can directly kill his opponent one-on-one -on, -one on the tower, or set up a play with Kasa, which is what I'm expecting is going to happen for Flash Wolves, Kasa will roam up, they will 2v1, either Mylon or Kami, take them down, and then suddenly open up for a split push. I want to see how Kasa continues to itemize, especially against his opponents. We can see that Aegis picked up as well as the warrior. So bringing some team utility, not the tankiest, but Sir T still working towards picking up those tank stats as is Mylon. So Pain Gaming, despite being down, they're now in an area of their map where they're going to be quite confident and capable of stalling the game out until they hit some, some more power spikes. Now, the problem for Pain is that Aegis just really isn't that useful for them in this game. However, Locket is. Locket is to get that shield and to resist the initial Yasuo burst. But then you you have to ask, is that Locket shield worth the trade-off of something like perhaps a Randuin's Omen in this game? And that's a really, really tough call, because if Sir T can get into the back line or slow that Yasuo down... I'm going to say no. I'm gonna, I also think that the, the Aegis is the fist. Oh, oh, Flash, Tippers, but the Rocket Jump did get channeled and DU'd. Blocks the Super Mega Death Rocket. <laughs> throws <laughs> up <laughs> the flag and says, Obrigado, dude. Thank you for that one. Good reactions from him. We see Kami now got his hourglass completed. Or he's going to upgrade his tier as the next one. So he's slowly getting towards his late game build where he's becoming harder and harder to kill. And of course, his damage is really going to spike when he gets that next item completed. And of course, that's another flash invested from Sorta. A minute ahead of the dragon fight. I think. Flash Wolves may have seen an opportunity. It did not pan out, but that will give Pain Gaming some wiggle room if we start another big five on five, which is what this game is continuing to show. Teams battle when they've got their entire team around. And now Flash Wolves should know, okay, Dragon is coming in about a minute's time. How do we set up for it properly so we force Pain Gaming to blindly walk towards us? We get pink wards, but right now, there's one pink ward in the inventory of Sword Art. I want to see if Kasa gets one once he goes back now because they need it to force these fights where Pain Gaming either has to say, we cannot face six and we just back away to free Dragon, or we walk straight into like a massive Wampo combo. Also, Karsa is very rich this game at 2-0 and 2. We take a look, he's also got that farm advantage, and just not really seeing that. I want to see an upgraded Sweeper Deficio, I really We got do. one of them, we got, right, one. We got one now, all right, we got one. But, so Flash Wolves goes back and makes the right call. Okay, guys, we need pinks. We have to get pinks to deny vision. The problem is they do it when the dragon is about to spawn. So now they're not here in time. Pain Gaming is already being set up. They have wards in the area and they take a free mid tower. So Flash Wolves, a minute earlier, this would have been good. Now it's just a little bit too late and you lose a bit of momentum. On. Well, a minute earlier, they were trying to kill BRTT. And of course, threw off all the timings. This time around, Pain does not have vision on the back of the dragon pit. Flash Wolves, they've started this and I think they're going to get it. It's dropped low, 400 HP, secure dragon number one for the Mylon Flash Wolves. Mylon is making oh, it, it he's kicked over the wall. Corsa says, nope, no gnar against the wall, but he's got no more enabling spells for Maple. Mylon peels away, Flash Wolves get the dragon. And that is what I was talking about earlier. The pain gaming compositions engage is so underwhelming that you have to be able to use Flash to get an engage. He blows Flash, very predicted. Karsa on top of it, just slamming R. Manages to kick the Gnar right out. Siege up the tower immediately after. NL 
using that AOE rocket to clear out the wave. They take away 30% of the tower's hit, hit points, but they got that dragon. They've added six minutes to the threat of aspect that pain were tantalizingly working towards. Just getting close that Meganaut pulled off. There's three or four guys into the wall, and suddenly Pain Gaming gets the fight they want. Instead, though, Flash will do to Kaza, and also smart move, then rotating down towards the bottom side and get some damage on tower. It's everything they want. Yeah, but they buy so much time because now Pain, they flash on the Nar is down. What are they going to do? Flash with, uh, they could flash, I suppose, with the Braum, maybe the Rek'Sai if they're Flash Wolves are really clumped up, but otherwise, just taking a look at this replay, there it is. And Karsa just on point, slams him right out of the fight. Beautiful. Ayud comes in, but there's a wind wall block on the Glacial Fisher. Great disengage from the Flash Wolves. Stunning. It really was. Babel this time is in a little bit of trouble. Has found himself between a BRTT, a Sir T, and he is certainly a dead Babel. What is he doing there? I'm afraid we're in a replay, the Fisher. I can't answer that question. The rest of his team was like... Maybe he was using his warding totem because it's on cooldown. Yeah, but See? wait for your he team. Always bring a friend. If he you want to go into the jungle, you bring a friend. <laughs> baited into death by his own warden totem. Warding totem. If only he had a sweeper. If only, if only. Yeah. Well, what did Pain Gaming get with this? A kill? And even at the gold lead that they were behind, and they instantly placed some deep vision and set themselves up for a good push in this bottom in a turret. Hell, they may even get this well, tower. So you always have to remember that the wind wall is what blocks him normally from taking down the tower. This damage is insane. Nothing Flash Wolves can do to stop it. So, Pain Gaming getting a small goal lead from that one pick. Bouncing back very nicely. Kami here still without... He's got a fully stacked tier, no doubt, by this point. But still no actual Seraph's Embrace. But he has one way of surviving some of these burst damage. And, you know, honestly, the longer this game goes on, if Pain can maintain vision around objectives, and they can force a Flash Wolves engage. The tankiness of this Orionic really can clean up some team fights. He'll dodge most of the burst, and there's not a great way for Flash Wolves to follow up if that Oriana lives through the initial barrage. And that painful period for Pain Gaming where they had the Aegis instead of the Locket was only a couple minutes. Sir T's now upgraded to the Locket. Got the makings of Randian's Omen here for Mylon as well. That randomness so, is really important. Gonna continue growing their power. Friendly reminder that Pain Gaming is in fact 1-0 over Flash Wolves. They beat them last week. So if Pain continues to play the safe and use the late game to their advantage, if any tiebreaker scenarios come into play, that 2-0 could be extremely valuable. I mean, Maple is really big with this Trinity Force, one of the best items on Yasuo, just has an insane amount of damage, but there's no Last Whisper yet onto NL, and as the armor items start coming through onto Mylon, there's not really anybody who can kill this Gnar. Still think Sir T sets himself too far behind by going for, for Locket. The item itself doesn't give him the stats he wants. Yes, okay, he gets a shield for his team, but by having no armor at this point, we're going to have these big, massive team fights versus Jinx and Yasuo. He's not a frontline. He's, he's going to peek in, be like, okay, I get one knockoff, and then he just flies out of the team fight. He can't stay in there. And that can be a big issue for Pain Gaming when they're trying to protect this backline of Orianna and Tristana, because they're looking, obviously, to kite back and protect them. Yasuo all in to kill him, and then suddenly you can turn it around. They don't want to be the guys running at Flash Wolves. Pain Gaming, if they do want to play that defensive style, we'll need to get some wards around this next dragon. A minute and a half to go. Two pinks in the river for Flash Wolves. Let's call it under their control. There's one very deep ward in the lane behind Pain, but that's it. There's nothing else in that bottom uh, quadrant of the map. And we're getting... Closer and closer to that spawn. Seraphs has been completed. Randians has been completed. So that power curve is getting steeper and steeper for both teams, in fact. Looks like Stake's going to get towards his... It looks like a Rylai's, but we'll see what he decides to spare back on. I don't like Rylai's. Well, I, I mean, be it, could be, it could be Death Cap. It's going to be Death Cap 100% yeah. for him uh, coming in. He's went for the Roger Vage build. We've seen that a bit more in top lane, Lulus. It's to be a little bit more tanky. I mean, top lane also late game when it's fully stacked up, it gives more AP. And you're trying to just stack as much AP as possible so your shields and whimsy and everything becomes more effective. It's not really about your own damage. And... So, T, my friend, that is more magic resistance. Yeah. Merc traits, man. It's to get, it's to thwart the Annie style. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, give me I'm, watching, I'm watching Deficio and Monte Cristo shake their head at me. <laughs> so, maybe, maybe it should be Ninja Tabby. You're here to tank the Jinx for as long as yeah. possible. That is going to be your goal because 
again, when you have kite comps, once your front line dies, well, it's too easy to reach the back line, of course, and these squishy members will drop dead so quickly. So unless Pain Gaming can buy enough time, for Tristana and Oriana, it will be difficult for them to win team fights, and Surti is not going to help them. Are Pain calling the Baron for Dragon Blood? As it stands, Pain have set up Vision in the top half of the map. Dragon is up in five seconds, but no, instead they're just going to teleport into the middle. Thank you, observers. The knockup comes down from Surti. Wild Growth has already been used on uh, uh, NL, and Milo's on the side. Mega Knock comes out. Shockwave will get the kill onto Sword Art. NL's down as well. That's a no! He gets the wall. Milo found three. He goes down. Process, but Kane Gaming are looking to clean it up. A defensive flash away over the wall for Stake. Follows through for Diu. He's got tag number one, tag number two. Lick it to stick it to stun him, and Stake gets away. Pain Gaming three for one, and they peel for Baron. And it's heading right back to Baron after that big team by win right there. Flash rolls were divided. They have to again their composition. They need to get the vision control around these objectives before they start walking in. They have to be the ones to engage first. They fail that time. Sword out gets caught out. Doesn't even use Timbers, and that's it. All game long, Flashwolves have been happy trading vision with Pain Gaming, but that's not how it's supposed to work. Rocket. No, no, no more page. Oh, look at oh, you. Oh, this is going down. But again, for Flashwolves, look at the amount of wards that have around the dragon. But they're better denying any vision away from Pain Gaming, so they can see what's going on. They have their own wards in there already. They get the engage, catches them out, and suddenly. Team fights are won by Pain Gaming. We get further and further into late game. Kami's getting stronger and stronger on this Oriana. This is scary too, because now with that Baron, they are perfectly set up. They've got a lot of zone control with the Oriana, and then they can push those turrets down relatively rapidly with the Tristana. So there could be a very strong siege coming in. They're going to try and bait this blue buff. Let's see if they can get a pick. There's a lot of pings going down. Flash and tip is available for Sword Art. He's not going to pull a trigger this time. So Flash Rules now find themselves 3,000 gold down. And they've got a fend off Baron buff from Pain. Wave clear is okay, albeit relatively short range. It'll take yeah. some time. It'll take time for Glitter Lance and those rockets. So Pain Gaming could have a massive power play. See it again, though, for Pain Gaming. They catch out Sword Art, NL, sorry, so effectively. Dude is just standing in the choke, blocking all the damage. And it's just about when the Shockwave comes in, nice play from. Kami here, nice play by Kami. And Milan, he's just buying time for the rest of the team. I think Sword Art really misplayed that. I think you just have to drop the Timbers immediately and try and run at that stage. Of course, it's not, it doesn't feel good to do that, but when NL's already caught out, when you've already used the Wild Growth, it's better just to drop it and then reset for the next fight. No Wombo, Wombo combo available. You can't Wild Growth the enemy team. Flash Wars team, though, whenever they're not playing these poke compositions, they really seem to fall apart. When it comes to setting up how to create picks with a comp like this one, or when they played Pain Gaming with the Ari last week, it was the same. They were looking for picks. They were looking to get the engage onto Pain Gaming. Because again, they're so weak when it comes to denying vision away and like take over one area and make it completely dark. It's too easy for Pain Gaming to play around it and just say, you know what, we're just gonna team fight. Like, we can see you. We're not gonna get caught out and we're not gonna create any picks on us. I'm gonna keep sieging. Satchel goes off, Windwall will block some of the damage. That Pain are then forced away. Flash Wolves now looking to defend. Uh, Pain have not backed away. Mega Knight has popped for Mylon though, so he's gonna get tired. He's gonna need some time before he can build up that Rage Bar. Not gonna stop him harassing Casa away. Casa, wow, that's the kick into the last breath. That's not worth Flash Wolves, you need that on a carry. We do see the Steel Tempest goes out. It will oh. stop. Four man Tempest comes out. We do see NL. He fires down the rocket. Now Diyut in full retreat. Shockwave is still available. If Flash Wolves chase, Pain Gaming have a re-engage opportunity. So Flash Wolves knew that Mylon's TP was down. Therefore, if they chunk him out of that fight, they may be able to hold on and waste a little bit of this Baron buff. So we saw them use a lot of cooldowns, looked a little bit dangerous. But for them, it's just about living right now. Don't let them get any tier twos. Take the edge off this Baron buff and then see if you can survive afterwards. So Flash Wolves looked a little bit aggressive, but they got the cooldowns out that they needed, even though they had to sacrifice Tibbers and the Oswo ultimate to do so. So how flashy the cop can look. Four man Tibbers looks beautiful, but then no ulti from April. He couldn't follow up. Obviously no knock up either just with the Tibbers, but again, buying time for the Flash Wolves. Pain Gaming are still gonna be very happy with this game so far. Keep looking at these carries here. You have QSS now completed for BRTT, but when the tables drops onto him, he can jump out instantly. And of course, Kami 
Should get a void stock very soon. I want to talk about stakes, Lulu. 218 CS, he's down 50. Down to 1,500 uh, gold. And that was a first pick, Lulu. This is a champion that has got so much talk in this competition, but it's just not offering the rest of the team composition all that much value right now. Well, if you pick an engage comp with Lulu, kind of take what she's really good at and say, yeah, we don't care about that. We want to engage. And like, so now, Stake has a really, really weird game where often he probably has to use the Wild Grove to try and set up Maple instead of using it defensively like we normally see to protect your carry. He obviously has both options. You can see him here speed up NL, try and get him in position for a few auto attacks. It's a really hard decision to make, though. That's usually why you see teams not playing uh, these hyper carries with a lot of engage because it creates sticky situations and whoa. Well, let's jump onto Mylon. He's going to get the nod down onto Maple. Oh, Shockwave man, he's going to crunch away. The Shockwave didn't do damage, but the follow-up resonance did. It's the youth that's gone down first. Mylon throws the house at NL and that will slow him down. Wild Growth was used. Pain Gaming have lost one, but they seem to be able to get away. They may lose position on the tower. Tibbers is still available for Sword Art, but he's got no flash. And Pain Gaming will get themselves to their inner middle turrets. Uh, there's a really dicey situation there. They decide to commit with the teleport play. There's the poke coming in from the Jinx Rockets. A lot of damage, but Pain Gaming holding on right now. Oriana still at full HP, but not defending the tower. Not killed, not excited for NL, but he will get the tower. Throws out the rocket, one or two more crits. It's not gonna be enough. And he needs to back away. Smart play by Kami. He couldn't defend out of that choke point because he was afraid of Tibbers still being up. And so just has to walk around the long way. So in the end, the tower goes down in favor of the flash walls. I want to see what happened with his ulti. Looked like he tried to get the ball sent over to Mylan. So we see TP coming in. Mega Nice very close being popped in. Flash walls think they can just burst him down instantly. While Soda tried to create a bit of a threat maybe. Towards, even used to stun. So use everything on Mylan in here. Kami should be looking to throw his ball at Milan, then use the shockwave, but instead just puts it in, into the wall oh, and hits wow. absolutely nothing with it. So despite Flash was using everything on the big tank, because the shockwave didn't connect, the damage wasn't there for Pain Gaming. Especially Noriana had four items right now. That is a not insignificant amount of damage utilized over the course of that team fight. Have heard from the observers, it was Wind Wall that in fact stopped the Oriana ball Beautiful. at the wall there. So thank you for that update. Guys, we're 38 minutes in. Dragon has spawned. NL gets a good chunk off of Surti's HP bar. There's the command attack. We can get a Steel Tempest. It's prime, but nobody's knocked up. There's a flank coming in from Mylon. Dragon secured by Flash Walls. Boomerang doesn't find a target. Mylon stunned. He gets a knock onto NL. NL's still alive. 2,000 HP with the wild growth. Everybody's chasing backwards. The Shockwave finds a target this time, and Maple's down. BRTT licks his wounds, hops over the wall to get away. The Boomerang will slow it down. Oh, Look whoa, at whoa, that! Whoa, whoa. Attack, Dash. dissonance, and uh, protect. Kami almost takes NL out, but the dragon goes to Flash Wolves. Another engage, though, for Mylon on his Nar. He's timing the Mega Nar really, really well. Gets around to the back here. But then we see what you can still do on the Lulu. Protect Sword Eye. Pop everything on him. He stays alive. They turn around the fight. Big, big shockwave, though, from Kami coming in as well. And they're going to go right after the Baron now, setting up on this objective. State coming in with the Whimsy and the Teleport. We do have Sir T. His ultimate still up, so there is going to be a bit of a contest right here. Is there any tunnels around the Baron? Like not Plus nothing five. for him, but just by threatening with three members, and obviously no Mabel available, Flashman says, you know what, we're going to back away. Still three dragons for them. And we do see the... Zeke's coming up right now onto Dayud, so it's maybe going to be a big power spike for them. As you look at this last fight, NL just trying to get the poke in to secure the Dragon Carson will go in. Nice use of the smite right there. And here we go, the flight comes through. Mylon going to get into that Mega Nar form and then pop that ultimate and get the combo onto NL. However, he will get wild growth for that additional HP, and then the Rocket's just doing an amazing amount of damage. And another great wind wall from Maple. You see how everything is piled on to Sword Art, and he just puts the wind wall towards where the rest of Paint Gaming is, so the damage on for PRTT is very low. If he was the guy who blocked the ball earlier from Kami as well, like these wind walls have been on point for Maple in these big team fights, making sure Paint Gaming, despite getting good engagement with the Meganar, cannot take down enough 
of the Flash World members. And Casa is enabling Maple. That time, uh, the last breath actually caught BRTT. Was able to chunk him down. We do see Baron is still up. There's no vision for Pain, but the Prey Seeker will seek Prey. Mylon will once again be the target. He gets kicked up. Last breath not used yet. Shockwave pulls NL backwards. He takes a big chunk from BRTT. Caster stuck against the wall. Knocked up by Surti as well. Now the battle splits up on two fronts. Caster's low, but he's been tagged by the Bronk Passive. We do see the rocket go out. Won't take anyone down. And this time, Pain win the fight. Really, really close right there, but you can see that Pain is getting a little bit too tanky for the burst coming out of the Flash Wolves. They dump so many abilities into killing Mylon, but he's already got the Thorn Mail. He's starting to stack some more HP now with another Giant's Belt, and he is becoming a big, big problem because if Flash Wolves can't get through this front line, they're just going to lose. Him has gone long enough for Sir T to even get some armor now. Also working towards that Randian's Omen. And we're, we're getting into the super mega late game because we're 42 minutes in, 60k a piece on either side. And for Pain and Flash Wolves, they actually hold the record of the longest game of Worlds. At 44 minutes, 52 seconds, it was the last game of week one. And the second game of week two, it looks like we're going to go the distance once more. Yeah, and the, the last game was very passive, honestly, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of trying to split push against each other, set up Baron. For like 15, 20 minutes between the teams, nobody could really clinch the Baron. This game has been a lot more about getting some fights around these objectives. We're gonna get another one because Pain Gaming, they're sitting on Mylon in the bottom lane, stack up that Megan off for him. And Flash was again trying to just start the Baron and force Pain Gaming to move into the area. I feel like we've said it before though, there's so many wards around it from Pain Gaming that they can see everything going on. Look at the ward just outside the Baron pit that's being pinked by Pain Gaming. So they know, oh well, we can see Flash Wolves, we don't have to face against anything. Look at the itemization for Casa. Dead Man's Plate picked up. That's not the most efficient of items, not the most tanky, but it just it keeps signaling the style of Flash Wolves 1. They need Casa to combo with Maple and take out Kami or BRTT. They need to kill BRTT right now. He's the major threat. He's got the Last Whisper. There's a Zeke's as well. And there is pretty much no armor on the side of Flash Wolves. They're starting to build it now. We see one, two items here, but they don't have the necessary amount of defense to survive this six item Tristana build that's coming through right now. BRTT is an absolute monster. As long as BRTT can move down, Behind his team, stay safe. Flash Wolves will not reach him other than Sword Art flashing in, but then the QSS comes in for BRTT. His Flash, he has his own jump. A lot of ways for him to escape. He support him as a face of the mountain if needed. Can block damage from him with the Brom. So a lot of ways for Pain Gaming to protect him, which is also why Flash Wolves keep going for Myelon. They're like, okay, he's the guy in the front. We just gotta take him down. But they cannot afford wasting big ulties like the Yasuo ulti on a NAR unless Pain Gaming is really out of position. All three members of Teleport have it up and available. You can see Mylon pushing in the bottom lane, top lane pushing towards Flash Wolves. Pain are going to set themselves up some vision. The Crab is likely in favor of Flash Wolves, though, so that'll give them some more time. Carson still doesn't have an upgraded trinket. This is... Yeah, by the trinket, Monty. This is driving me insane right now. Got to set up those picks, and you know, we're talking 45 minutes nearly into this game, and they have to deny vision to be successful. We talked about it so many times. Again, it's the story here for Flash Wolves. They have some good team fights, they have some good mechanics, the wind wall is coming up from Mabel blocking, Casa making big plays here and there. But Pain Gaming can always see what's going on. Well, it's all right though. Pain Gaming, Casa's flying! He's found Diu, but nobody else! Diu manages to get away. Mylon's still pushing the bottom line and Casa's down. Killed by Kami. That's now a 5v4. Mylon's still not left the lane. And now he's gonna get the assistance of Lulu. We need to see how much damage Mylon can do on that tower. He doesn't have a lot built up outside that cleaver. We'll chunk it to below 50%. There's not enough support. He may even get the entire objective. Meganon's going to be a threat here for stake as the rest of Pain Gaming have gone to Baron. So starting Baron here, one member dead cast up for a lot of time still. Stake is TPing in. Mylan should be able to follow or just take the inhibitor because Stake just used teleport away from the base. Mylon is going to stick onto the inhibitor for now. You can see it in the bottom of your screen. Baron has been peeled away. 20 seconds left until Casa respawns. Stake just recalled. They can start Baron again now if they want to. Pain this is gaming. a really nice bait from Pain right here. They're doing some great work on denying this. They're going to go ahead. They should just go for that Baron yeah. once again. They shouldn't recall. No reason to send him back. 
Oh, they lost their resolve at the last second. Hey, Gaming are often so close. They have like so ah. many good calls they make, and then when they have to make the final one, the one that can win them the game, they hesitate. They're like, no, Stake is on the bottom side. You don't want to risk it. Even though it could be a five versus three, Castle was still dead for another five, six seconds. Officially the longest game of the 2015 World Championship. Despite the exposed inhibitor, Flash Wolves are one dragon away from Aspect. Baron still stands and Pain Gaming need to find a way to break open this match. Ah, oh, I'm so heartbroken after that last push. Pain. With these double teleports, they should be executing this split push better. They have a lot of options against Flash Wolves. They get that kill on the Carson. Carson goes way too aggressive, trying to get a kick on the Diude. But, I mean, you have to commit to that. They, they were doing so well up until that last moment. But here we go with the Flash Wolves. Let's take a look. Teleport available for Mylon. Look at the bottom of your map. He is only going to the inhibitor. Baron's going Wait, low. Tutti's coming in. The Shockwave will not be enough. And they used it to try steal. Mylon's going to get the inhibitor. They will trade it for Surti's life. He's saying he just to survive. Sordot finds the stun. And I'll get excited. He's going to run down Dude. He's going to manage to get Stan behind me and Unbreakable, which will prevent the death. But they expended a lot. Mylon, now he's in a little bit of trouble. Mega Nar is available. Not going to get the reset on the hop, but he will be able to at least get out of range. Look at the rest of Flash Walls. They're pushing onto the inhibitor turrets. I'll see if they can defend. If Pain can defend this, which I guess they won't. They're all back in Fountain right now, so they're not going to get a chance. Flash Walls just pushing forward. Had they been able to hold, I think that's a very preferable trade for Pain. Well, they may be able to hold on. Take a look, Chompers are down. Maple's found BRTT. The Wind Wall will prevent any follow-up damage, but the Steel Tempest knockup is not good. You can see BRTT get oh, away. He's caught! Bail TT! He's in trouble! Wild goes for another follow-up! Shut down by Maple! They're onto the Nexus turrets! Kami goes golden with the Hourglass, and Maple is taking shots from the Death Star laser. Now Mylon is gonna go forward. He's on the wrong side of the Wind Wall. Tower's down. NL's gonna get exhausted. Dude, can he stop him? That is the question. Going forward, the Shockwave catches NL! He's not against the They're wall! Defending. Snake is looking to kill the tower. He's got a Lich Bane. He's gonna be able to get some damage, but not enough! And Pain Gaming, they hold true. Well, that Lich Bane just barely not enough. Now, can't what is Pain going to do in response right now? They were so close to just losing that game. It's been incredibly back and forth. Each team with chances to win, but no TP team now. committing. Kami going to TP and take down this tower. He's going to push in even further. Sordat is the only member alive. 25 seconds for Kasa. They can push another one. Pain Gaming on the verge of taking another inhibitor. Also remember, they play Coup in the very next match. So not only do they have to finish this one, they don't even leave the stage. Pain Gaming onto the inhibitor turret in the top lane. 30 seconds before NL's up. Sir T and Kami will take another Nexus and get themselves out clean. There's simply no one to respond from the Flash Wolves. Oh my. This is getting wild. Oh, Pain Gaming. Again, I've been so close. There's so many good calls for this team. And then the last one is often where it slips for them. They went away from the Baron. Flash said, OK, we're going to start it this time around. Gets the Baron, gets the fight, and move into the base. And we were so, so close. I mean, look how close we are. The next is going to be down to, like, what, 20% HP. Yeah, and there you see, of course, BRTT getting chunked out and Maple finishing him off. Great job getting into the back line right there. Snake trying to add a little bit of damage from the outside. Maple eventually knocked out here by Mylon. Watching over that wind wall, but here we go, the defense. And Stake tries to come around, but he could be using his Lich Bane right now. Honestly, I think if Stake had actually been autoing yeah. the Nexus, they would have won that game. Uh, he didn't really have to get zoned out. There was nothing there that was really a threat to him. And so he gets a couple more uh, Lich Bane autos. I think it's over. Could be some miscommunication. It looked like some members were calling. We have to back away. Some members were saying, no, we can finish it. Sora definitely was looking at the Nexus, but he was on his own. And instead, we might get that one last team fight. Dragon, four of them for Flash Wolves. They're going to look for next one as well with no Baron alive. Flash Wolves will join Fnatic's club of Rito, please. Make the Nexus left. Oh, but oh, on top! Stakes coming yeah. up! We do see the Void Rush from Sir T down to below half hit points. There are now supers onto Stake. Look at the middle oh, lane. Pass is looking for a target. Sonic Wave didn't find anybody. Stake, he's gonna get wild growth. Flashes away. It's not over yet. Yeah. Pain Gaming looking for more. They've killed him. He've killed him. With Stake down. Pain Gaming have got 50, 70 seconds.
seconds to play around to the numbers advantage and supers. Surti kept a tunnel in the base in case the back door was going to happen. He instantly ulted back, defends it, takes on it, gets caught behind enemy lines, he dies. Pain Gaming are looking for the last inhibitor now. Uh, what a story it would be for Pain to get the 2 0 in this group over the Flash Wolves. And they're pushing forward right now. Those turrets are not lasting long against a six item Crisp. They certainly are not. Pain Gaming may even be able to just tank this one up. Minions are making their way down. Look at the supers top and bottom pushing in closer and closer to the base. Yeah, no reason to go too aggressive for Pain Gaming. Just wait for Super Minions. Get your tower, Stake is going to recall, and then suddenly we're gonna play around number five of the dragon instead for paying gaming here. Only if you get a chance with my line, you can go for the dive, but Windwall is blocking the damage for now. We'll find out. The tower's still alive. The Death Rocket will chunk Dude out. Casa, I think he connected to the Sonic Wave, decides not to follow Lee Syndrome and holds onto the trigger. Casa follows up, gets some more vision. The inhibitor is exposed. The Super Minions. They are going crazy on the tower. Stake is back to defend. No teleport for him. Well, they're actually pulling back right now. now oh! Oh try and go for this dragon instead. Flash wolves are in four, so it's very important that Payne actually secure this. We'll see if Karsa wants to attempt to steal. What a risky play. If Payne can drag it out, they can let the supers do the work for them. It's going to be hurting Payne, though. They do not have Flash on BRTT. They do not have Mega Nar. Dragon secured by Flash Wolf. It's the Ash. Again, yeah. BRTT and Surti are close, but BRTT backs away. He gets to hit stick by NL. Super Minions are still pushing into the base. NL's got two. He's looking for more. That's a triple kill, and he's excited. He's and he gets to the get Pentra. The excitedness is still there. The rest of Flash Wolves are pushing on to the Nexus. I I think Flash Wolves have done it. I do not believe there is anyone that can stop the Nexus going down. And Mylon, Mylon is all that stands. He's it will TP not down. be enough. Yeah, well, his attempt to backdoor, but Stake is already back there to defend against the Super Minions. That's going to be it. And Flash Wolves will take it. Heartbreak for Pain Gaming. And a lease on life for Flash.